Hello, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and a visionary of the Valder Beebe Show's That Celebrity Interview. Thank you for staying with me through the break. I hope you love the music. I'm going to change um, the tempo a little bit. We've got Dr. Amanda House from the University of Florida, College of Veterinary Medicine, and Dr. Craig Barnett of Merck Animal Health. And they are going to be talking about animals, or rather horses, I think, and the human flu virus. Thank you, guys, and welcome to the Valder BB Show. Thank you for having us. Good morning. Thank you. Dr. House, let's start with you. Can you tell me what disease should owners be most concerned about and what animals are we speaking of? Absolutely. So we're talking about horses today and some equine infectious diseases are significant enough to justify vaccination for every single horse every single year. And these are called the core equine vaccines as defined by the American Association of Equine Practitioners. And these vaccines include vaccination for Eastern and Western equine encephalomyelitis, tetanus, rabies, and West Nile virus. Now, the clinical signs and symptoms of these diseases can vary somewhat, but mostly they cause neurologic symptoms, which can be extremely devastating for the horse. And in addition okay. to the core vaccines, we also have risk-based vaccines. And those vaccines, the decision to give them is, determ is determined by the risk of exposure to disease. Equine influenza virus and equine herpes, the respiratory form of equine herpes virus, are the two uh, common examples of risk-based vaccines that we give to horses, especially horses that travel and are exposed to a lot of other horses. And we recommend horse owners consult with their veterinarian about risk-based vaccine administration. Well, what I was going to say to you, Dr. Uh, Barnett, in Texas, you know, we're big on cattle and we're big on horses. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm thinking ranchers are pretty uh, well versed and very close to their veterinarians. So what should they be asking? Should they tell their veterinarians or do they need to ask about this? About vaccinations, I would highly recommend they consult with their veterinarians about all the vaccinations, the core vaccines, as Dr. House alluded to, as well as risk-based vaccinations. Which diseases are my horses most likely to be exposed to? Equine influenza, equine herpes virus, potentially strangles, and other risk-based diseases. So I'd highly recommend they consult with their veterinarians about which diseases and effects. And individual horses require individual vaccination programs or protocols, and your veterinarian can really help you design that. Dr. House, any consideration beyond vaccinations to deal with this? Absolutely. In addition to vaccination, good biosecurity practices are absolutely critical. And this includes things like taking your horse's temperature daily because a fever can be one of the first signs of infectious disease. And it also includes things like good hand hygiene, just washing your hands very well with soap and water in between handling different horses. In addition to, in addition to those practices, you can find more information on biosecurity at equinediseasecc.org. And you can find some great information on the updated vaccines that Merck has at prestigevaccines.com. I'm going to wrap up with you, Dr. Barnett. Why bring this out to the public? I just need to know. Uh, you guys are taking a big step here because I have a large audience, and I know you've been on radio all morning. So why, do, why does the public need to know this? Was this like the bird flu? Is this something that everybody needs to know? Yeah, so vaccinating horses is very critical to keeping your horses protected for West Nile virus and and eastern cephalomyelitis, rabies, but also equine influenza. We've seen a really uptick in equine influenza the last few years uh, because like with human influenza, equine influenza virus mutates or changes over time. Uh, through our Merck biosurveillance program, we've been monitoring those mutations and those changes, and we've seen significant antigenic drift or significant change in the virus such that we've seen a lot of 
influenza outbreaks across the country, including in Texas, and we've even been seeing outbreaks in well-vaccinated horses, suggesting that we need to update our vaccines. We actually isolated a strain we call Florida 13 from an outbreak in Florida, and Merck Animal Health put that Florida 13 highly pathogenic strain in the Prestige Equine Influenza vaccine line, and you can find out more information about that at prestigevaccines.com. Dr. Amanda House and Dr. Craig Barnett, thank you so very much for this important information, especially in my state, the state of Texas. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you.